Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Nadia and this is the place where we get real. And today I am going to be getting real about why you are not getting laid anymore. So let's get straight into the video. Guys, gals, non-binary people, you're getting yourself in the mood. Don't want to be really curling them like this. Let me start that again. <laughs> Can I get anything wrong? Hey you guys, so um, I just wanted to update you on some news and that is I have kittens! <laughs> no, I well I don't own them, I fostered them. They're very cute though, little black kitties. So this one's name is Biscuit and this one's name is Muffin and they love me and I love them. But yes, I'm just fostering them until they can be adopted out to a good home and they've already run off and they are loving my Christmas tree at the moment. Like they keep climbing up it, but they're very little. So, you know, I don't think they're gonna like knock the tree down or anything. So yeah, I just thought it would be a good opportunity for me to practice being a pet owner in case that's something I wanna do in future. And also those of you that have been following me for a while will know I'm like a little bit mentally unstable. I knew I was gonna cry. <laughs> and so, <laughs> I had read something about how animals, cats in particular, are really good for people's mental health. So I thought, why not foster some kittens? So there you go. Now I'm a cat mom. So in case you can't tell, today's video is gonna be a slightly more relaxed one. I want to actually share with you a question that I got from one of my Patreon members. I regularly answer people's sex questions anonymously, one-on-one -on -one through Patreon. I also share lots of really exclusive sex education and sex advice content over on my Patreon, stuff that is just way too X-rated to share anywhere else. And if you join my Patreon, you will get access to my close friend stories on Instagram. And that's where I do regular deep dives on sex and sexual based topics plus I take you behind the scenes of my life I share a lot of very raunchy sex stories over there that I definitely cannot share here on YouTube and I definitely cannot share anywhere else on the internet because I will be censored so if you want to hear some really raunchy sex stories I'll actually give you a little small snippet of one I did recently so basically I just say tell me <laughs> I just started coming like she'd been f***ing me so well from Doggy Star like for a while like I was really f***ing close and just also like and I forgot to mention the best part a lot of you all have been asking me if I have a podcast I have a members only podcast that you can listen to over on Patreon so consider checking it out before I get into my Patreon member sex question, I want to give a big shout out and a thank you to my friends at Moments Condoms. Moments Condoms are made for anyone who wants to have a good time, but their true passion is empowering women and femme people to celebrate and protect their sexual health and take the stigma away from purchasing condoms. Moments Condoms are designed for pleasure and durability. Made from premium quality latex, each and every condom is quality tested to ensure you always feel protected. Emblazoned with fun slogans to take the intimidation factor out of carrying condoms, Moments want everyone to feel confident about prioritizing their sexual health because having safe sex shouldn't be taboo or gender specific. Grab a purse sized tin or try a pack of their new ultra thin range which comes with extra lubrication and is available in regular, large and extra large. You can find them at over 600 Coles supermarkets Australia wide or hit the link below this video and use code NADIA50 for 50% off when you spend $20 or more. Okay now I'm going to read this sex question that came from one of my Patreon members recently. So my partner and I have been together for six and a half years. And in the last couple of years, we've been in a pretty big sex drought. We've had sex maybe twice this year. We don't argue or fight. And outside of the lack of bedroom activity, we have fun. Around the house, I make dinner most nights. I do school pickup and drop off and overall helping out. And then this 
member contacted me a couple of days later with an update. He said, hey, I just thought I would give you a bit of an update. We actually had a big chat about things this weekend. And as it turns out, a lot of my partner's issues with sex stem from her not feeling comfortable in her body. All right. Let's get into it. I want to share with you some of what I told this Patreon member. So the very first thing I want to do is just normalize sex droughts. It is completely 100% normal and very, very common for people in long-term relationships to go through periods of sexlessness. It's really only something to be concerned about when it has stretched on for something like a year, like in this situation, and particularly if it is impacting your ability Okay, I'm gonna have to just move my cat for a minute because <laughs> my cat has started scratching the scratching post and I don't know if you guys can hear it if it's getting picked up on the video, but I'm just gonna quickly go and <laughs> move my cat. So basically don't judge yourself if you're in a long-term relationship and you're going through a short period of sexlessness. Now in the case of this particular Patreon member who I'm going to call John just as a pseudonym to maintain their anonymity. This is quite a long period of sexlessness. Only having sex twice in a year would meet the definition of a sex starved relationship. Most therapists consider a sex starved relationship to be a relationship where a couple has sex 10 or less times a year. Now I will also say if that is something that you and your partner are both comfortable with, you don't need to be worried. You should have sex the amount of times that is comfortable for both of you. But if the lack of sex is bothering one or both of you, then it does need to be addressed. Some really interesting studies have found that when a couple cohabit, they share the same house, and particularly when they also share children, when that has gone on for a year or longer, women's interest in sex dramatically declines. This has been shown in very extensive studies. And as a culture, we tend to sort of put this off as, well, that's just women because, you know, women just aren't very sexual. They're not very into sex. But I'm here to tell you, this is complete BS. Mm. There is plenty of research to prove that women are just as horny as, if not more horny than men. In fact, I've got plenty of female friends who are way more horny than their male partners. But this lie is so pervasive in our culture that it's not just men who believe it. Women will believe this lie themselves. I'll often speak to women who'll say, My partner and I have stopped having sex. I think it's just because I'm not really a very sexual person. So I will ask those women, okay then, if you're not a sexual person, do you not masturbate? And more often than not, they'll say, oh no, I masturbate. And then I'll say to them, well, do you notice sexually attractive people on the street? Do you sometimes do a double take at a hottie? And they'll say, yeah, I do. Well, that's because these women who've convinced themselves that they're just not very sexual people are in fact living, breathing, sexual beings. The issue isn't that there is some kind of inexplicable phenomenon where women just across the board suddenly lose interest in sex as soon as they sign a lease with their partner or get married. There is certainly no scientific data to back up the idea that putting a wedding ring on a woman's finger cuts off the circulation down to her genitals and she just can no longer be sexual. Most people who have been in relationships, long-term relationships with women will know that you're having plenty of sex in the beginning. It's just as the relationship goes on that it is declining. Now, one of those reasons, like I say, is in heterosexual couples when they are cohabiting, what tends to happen is women pick up a lot more domestic labor and this has been proven again and again in really extensive research and they get tired and stressed and they get resentful. Actually, some of you might remember Courtney Cox who played Monica in Friends. Uh, she was with David Arquette for a long time. And when they broke up, which I think was like back in like 2016, quite some time ago now, David Arquette famously came out on a Howard Stern interview and said that one of the reasons that the relationship had broken down was because Courtney had said to him that she was starting to feel like she was his mother. And he also said in that interview that they hadn't had sex for a long time. Women don't want to feel 
like their husband or boyfriend is their grown adult son. There are really few things that can be as much of a libido killer as that. So that obviously ties into the housework element, but there is another ignored element because we know that women that are in these long-term relationships will still have interest in sex. In fact, many of these women will go and have sexual affairs. This isn't to say that if you're going through a sex drought, it's okay to have a sexual affair. I'm certainly not endorsing it. And it's not necessarily to say that everyone who goes through one is just gonna go and run out and cheat on their partner. The fact that these sexual affairs happen shows us that it's not that women are losing their sex drive, they're just losing interest in their partner. And there is some really interesting research to suggest that the reason this happens is because women require a lot more sexual novelty than men in order to maintain an interest in sex. And what tends to happen when we're in a long-term relationship, especially when we are living with a partner, is that things get very repetitious and predictable. And this is why relationship experts will so often tell couples in long-term relationships, make date nights, do not stop dating because date nights are a great way to get the novelty back into your relationship. Particularly if you actually organize a date, going somewhere really fancy and nice where maybe your wife or girlfriend has to actually go out and like buy like a cute new dress that she can feel like really glammed up and really sexy in. That is also, by the way, going to help your partner with her body image issues. Obviously, most women struggle with body image issues because we unfortunately live in a culture that teaches women to hate our bodies. But a really simple way to make your female partner feel more confident in her body is simply to just give her opportunities to dress up and be her sexiest self. Dates are a great way to do this. Even better if you can inject more mystery by not getting ready together. Because when you get ready together for a date, you kind of don't really have that big reveal moment. You just kind of see each other go from your slobbish selves around the house to slowly, slowly getting a little bit more put together. But if you make a date where you say like, hey, I'm gonna be working in the city. You're gonna be dropping the kids off. Let's just meet at this restaurant. Then you can have that big special reveal moment. And that will also help to kind of trick your brain into feeling like you were in that initial dating process again when you went to just meet each other and you were getting ready to meet each other you didn't know what the other person would be wearing when they showed up and there was that little bit of excitement women do not want to keep having sex when that sex is not getting them off and it is not enjoyable and unfortunately sex education does not really teach us anything about what women need to get off. And so what tends to happen is men turn to porn to learn about how to please women. And unfortunately, porn is a terrible sex educator. It doesn't show us pretty much any accurate information about how female sexual pleasure works. In porn, basically we see a dick go into a vagina, pound away a few times, and then a woman has a screaming orgasm. But actually, according to research, we know that very few women can come through penetration alone. Most women come through direct sustained clitoral stimulation, which is something that tends to be left out of regular heterosexual sex. Now, the other little tip I'm going to let you in on to get your partner more in the mood for sex and to get your partner more interested in sex in future because you're gonna be giving her better quality sex is to use a technique called Sensate Focus. And this, is a technique that the researchers Masters and Johnson discovered back in the 1960s when they were doing these crazy cutting edge experiments where they studied people in labs having sex and masturbating and monitored them and surveyed them to learn things about the human sexual response. And one thing that they realized pretty quickly was that one of the most effective ways to get someone with a vagina really wet and really aroused is through not touching the breasts and genitals and instead teasing other parts of the body. So touching over the top of the clothes, things you did basically when you were a horny teenager, lots of making out, extended, deep, passionate kissing is known to be a huge panty dropper for women. And yet most people in long-term relationships forget to do this. I'm willing to bet if you're in a long-term relationship, you probably just give your partner a quick peck on the lips goodbye when they go to work. Start pulling them in for a deep, long, passionate kiss. Not because you're trying to bang them in that moment, but just because you're trying to make them feel 
sexy again and just to start planting a seed of thinking about you and the relationship in a sexual way again. And it's also going to re-inject that novelty because if you haven't made out like teenagers in a while and you start doing it, that's going to create a bit of excitement. The last thing that I will say is a lot of women that I talk to don't feel seen and heard in their relationships. And these are women often that do have partners that, you know, like John said in his question into me, they do contribute to the household. It's not a partner that they have arguments with and it's a partner that they love and have fun with, but they don't feel like their partner sees them and hears them. You can really honestly be having all of the cunnilingus skills in the world. You can be doing the romantic dinners out. You can be doing the housework, but if you are not making your female partner feel seen and heard, it's unlikely that she's gonna be super in the mood for sex. And women tend to feel really seen and heard in that initial dating process when you're actually trying to find out her favorite foods. You can take her to that restaurant where they serve her favorite food, where you're asking her things because you're getting to know her for the first time ever. And that's when the sex is in rampant supply. You're getting tons of it. So if you want to get back to that period of having lots of sex, pretend like you are dating again. Start peering behind the veil and really digging deep into getting to know her as a person. And if you liked this video and you'd like me to do more content where I answer your sex questions, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the notification bell, otherwise YouTube will not let you know when my videos are going live. And I will see you all in the next video. Mwah.